Great. Yeah, if you couldn't understand Paul, you won't understand me. <laughs> so good luck. Nah. Well, what a so good to be here. Um, I love America. I was just counting last night um, how many times I've been to the States. And I've been here 2013, and then 2018, and then, so it's a five-year gap, and then I've been here, I didn't even realize, every two years since. And like, I love you guys. America is like, there's a place, like, mate, um, yeah, um, yeah, as I was just praying for this morning, I just, and it was so cool, like just with the worship, and then even uh, what Paul shared on, I couldn't help but see that there's like a clear um, uh, posture that what, what the Lord is doing, like right now in this meeting, because Paul and I, he to testify, we did not speak at all. Our notes are the same, point for point, everything. So the Lord is saying something, the Lord is doing something. Um, sorry? Um, so can we pray? Can we pray? Let's pray. Father, we thank you. We honor you. To you be all the glory, all the honor, all the praise. Precious Jesus, have our hearts, have our lives, have our motives, have everything. And Holy Spirit, glorify, glorify Jesus this morning. Glorify Jesus, glorify Jesus in all that we do, all that we say, in how we live. In Jesus' mighty name, amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Um, you know, we, we live in a lost and dying world. <laughs> we do. It's, it's, um, it's a world that needs healing, a world that needs love, needs God's love, God's pure love. And see, the Holy Spirit empowers us to live like Christ. As I was just praying this morning, I'm constantly reminded that there is no way, no way to live in the Spirit separate from Christ. That's everything. He is our everything. And you might wonder to yourself, yeah, like, yeah, I get this, I know this, Jesus is our... No, I mean, He is our everything. Like, when you wake up in the morning, He's like there waiting for you. He just wants your attention. He wants your, he wants your heart, your heartbeat. When you wake up in the morning and your stomach's grumbling and you're thinking, I can't wait to smash, what do you guys say, Cheerios. Oh, I don't know. It's an American thing. He's, 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 he's there waiting. He's, he's there waiting. As you eat your bowl of Cheerios, I'm going to knock this over. I'm putting this here. As you're, as you're, waiting, to, as you're waiting to eat Cheerios, he's, he's there. He's like, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just here. Like, would you spend another moment with me? Would you, just be, would you be aware of me as you're brushing your teeth? See, the Christian life, if I had to sum it down, to like one of the most simplest sentences, or if I could sum it down to a phrase, it would be this. It is being more aware of Jesus than your very breath. What do you mean? I, I really mean that when we wake up in the morning, he's, he's just waiting for you. He loves you. When, you. when you're driving and that car like rips you off, he's like, and you're ready to Flip a bird. I don't know, is that what you guys call it? Aussie salute. Aussie salute. <laughs> right. <laughs> He's there waiting for you. There is no life in the Spirit separate from Christ. And I think one of the biggest questions, and, and, and Paul unpacks so well and so eloquently, and I'm not an eloquent speaker, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not the smartest guy tool in the shed, sharpest tool, but I think one of the questions that constantly might um, 
just, uh, just ponder in your minds, time and time, in my mind, time and time again. How do I live in the Spirit? How do I fellowship with the Holy Spirit? How do I have union with the Holy Spirit? It is beholding the Lamb. That is it. That is everything. I could spend the next 30 minutes just over and over and over again. Jesus is the door. He is the access point. No one, what did Jesus say? No one comes, not to heaven, no one comes to the Father except by me. He is everything. I, and I'm not going to share my testimony, we'll be here all day, but if I were to share my testimony in, in detailed lengths, what I will say is that I was a physically sick, a suicidal, depressed, just person with issues. I was full of pride. I was some of these guys here, maybe like Joel and Josh, they can testify. They've known me for years. I was the most prideful guy you'll ever meet. I boast in that more than all of you. <laughs> I really, I had issues. I did. I had issues. You know, and maybe, maybe you're here in this room and, and Paul was kind of touching on these things of, on how to live by the Spirit. And, and, you're, and you're just, you're, you're wondering, you're like, I know I have these issues. I'm aware of my condition. I want to live by the Spirit. What am I to do? Jesus. Now, I mean this. I mean this. Beholding the Lamb that was slain. Beholding the, the cross. My flesh crucified on that cross. It is no longer I who live, but Christ. Christ. Christ, the anointed one who lives in me. So what is the purpose of this life? What is the purpose of this message? What is the purpose? Is that fellowship with the Holy Spirit is a life surrendered to the Father, a life devoted to Jesus the Christ, and a life in complete union with the Holy Spirit. And I really felt, as I've just shared this morning, that the Lord Jesus is pulling us in to soul affection, single adoration, one purpose, one man that was slain on that cross for all eternity, whose blood at the altar of heaven is speaking better things over your life. <laughs> oh, God is good. I want to touch on a couple of things, and I want to identify evidence of the Holy Spirit at work in our lives. And ultimately, they come in, uh, how I see it according to Scripture, is there's two ways to see the evidence of the Holy Spirit is at work in your life. It is both, both fruit and power. Now we see the works of power in the Old Covenant. I won't touch on that. But we see like great mighty men and women of God and they see miracles and things. That's the Holy Spirit upon a person working through them. You know, actually, in fact, when we talk about even last night, I think it was, about people that stumble and they fall and they do mighty works. Often, I'm not saying always, but often in those circumstances, it is the Holy Spirit working upon someone, resting upon someone, but the oil of the Lord that was poured out didn't come in. There's, a, there's actually a difference. You can, you can see, because the gifts are without repentance, you can see the power of God work through your life and it not come within your life. And I love, like, the, the Holy Spirit's a sensible person. I I'm the guy. I love the weird stuff. I am. There you go. I've just said it. Now I've, I've cut half of you off. But, but I'm also, like, I'm a, I'm, I'm a man of order. Like, I, they're, they're, things need to make sense to a degree, according to the Word. It always, always needs to make sense. But if I can, before I unpack, just a couple of really brief points. I, I felt um, this morning, again, in prayer, that... Maybe for some people in this room, we, we don't have a complete, uh, not grid, but maybe a foundational understanding of who the Father, or who, what is God? Who is God? And, and you hear this trinity or the totality of God himself. And it's like, what is that? What does that mean? If I can quickly, briefly, we have God the Father. And it's from, he'll, it's from his will that all things are purposed. Jesus said, I do nothing separate from my Father. He lived in the perfect faith, the perfect will of the Father. There's um, different aspects. Again, this is another message, but I, ju I just want to draw you into the, to the mystery that's been revealed of God and of His Word. And, and um, 
But, you know, when, when we're in a room and, and we, we, we feel the presence of the Lord, like I'm, I'm saying like a tangible feeling. Now, um, th- this is not to try to uh, teach anything weird, but there's a reality that when we're in worship to Him, there's three things according to Scripture that we see that uh, is when He's glorified. So there's the doxa glory, which is like God's brilliance. So sometimes we're in worship, we're like, wow, I feel God. It's not so much that we're feeling God, it's that we've forgotten about ourselves and we're more aware of God than we are ourselves. So we haven't entered, uh, hear my heart, like I, <laughs> when we're worshiping Him, to worship Him in spirit and in truth and in all of our being is to be more aware of Him than ourselves. Worship, if I can be so bold to say this, I, I come as a meek little man. Um, if I can say this, worship isn't true worship until you've forgotten you. If you're mustering up in a moment how to feel or how to encounter God in love, we're, we're missing the point. Lyrics are great. Read those lyrics and allow those words to pierce our soul. We have this brilliance of God, there's, uh, sh- there's evidences like Shekinah, which is like manifest glory in a room, Kabod, we see uh, where there's like this weightiness, and even when Jesus said, I feel like that's a manifestation, when they were about to um, uh, crucify him on the cross, and they says, who are you? And he says, I am he. These guys got knocked over. It's like there's a weightiness, there's a weightiness to his word. We have Jesus, who is the media, the sacrifice. In him, all things are held together. He is the door. You know, there's a lot of people, I don't know what it's like here, so I, just if I can quickly say, to the Australian context, at least in our circles, we, we have a lot of like new age things. That's a massive thing, a lot. Um, and maybe in Africa, it's a lot of the witchcrafty stuff. It's like, it's not so much the witch doctors, it's more these guys that are like your everyday people and they're entering through mystical things. You know, there's ways, we're spiritual beings, there's ways to see these things. I'm not, a lot of them are fraudulent, but there's some of that stuff that is legitimate. Can I say that? But it's not the right way. Jesus is the door. He's the access point to the Father. There's the aspects of Jesus is we, we can walk in little faith, great faith, perfect faith. Jesus walked in the perfect faith of God walking in and only the will of the Father. Now, the Holy Spirit is not the power spirit. Like Paul said, He is the Holy Spirit, holy. He produces holiness in us. The Holy Spirit's a personal being. You can dishonor the Holy Spirit according to Scripture. We saw people that died in the New Testament because they lied to the Holy Spirit. So the role of the Holy Spirit is to empower us to live like Christ. This is the Holy Spirit, and and that was the thing I I touched on. Again, it's a sermon for another day, but we have the Spirit of God that was poured out. There's like a, 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 there's a, so which is like the works. We see like people doing healing and miracles, Um, and and we also see that there's um, like the, it's, it's become, it's an inward thing. So you have an upon and you have a within. The fruits... The Spirit of God moves upon us, so uh, um, yeah, smeared over, so and rubbed in. So it's it's when the uh, oil, and you look at it in the Old Testament when they they put oil on the sheep, and this oil would would rub upon them and it would protect the sheep from from bugs and insects and that. So the Holy Spirit plays a role that actually protects you from the wicked one, bugs and insects and issues and things that try to get into the coat of the sheep cannot get there because it's the oil of the Holy Spirit that, that coats these, um, these lambs. So it is for God's will that we would see heaven on earth. Remember, God's, it's His will, it's His purpose. It is by Jesus' sacrifice we can, and it is through the Holy Spirit we do the will of the Father. Without the Father, there is no purpose. Without Jesus, we have no access. And without the Holy Spirit, we have no fruit and no power. I hope that makes sense. So the Christian life is a life more in love with Jesus than the mission. You wonder, I've had conversations with people and they're like, oh, I want to go to the mission, I want to do this. Like, what are your thoughts? Be his bride and you'll be his hands and feet. You wake up in the morning more aware of him and your, your love and adoration for him. 
That's living by the Spirit. In John 14, it said, Jesus says, I'm going to give you a helper. You will know that it's the helper because he will give glory to me. In fact, that's also a qualification, I believe, that the Holy Spirit's in something. Is was Jesus glorified in that moment? So the Christian life is a life in his presence. It's more aware of him than our breath. It's he's our everything. And it's, it's not just for like a minister. Can I say, I work full time in business and in, in all sorts of other stuff. I'm, I'm an elder at a local church and do all sorts of stuff. But like, it's for everyone. It's for everyone. Are you guys all right? So, yeah, and I, yeah. So, that, a couple of brief points, if I can, is there's death produces obedience, and obedience produces power. So, if you were to ask yourself, how, 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 how do I live this life? How do I, how, how do I live in both fruit and power? We must crucify the flesh. It's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. When someone cuts me off, it's not, the reaction uh, shifts from becoming a, a, the Aussie salute to, <laughs> to just blessing them. What? That's so wild. It's such a, like, it's such a left of field scope to love your enemies, to bless those who curse you. You know the Beatitudes, when Jesus said, on this house, I will, um, so, so on, in, in the Beatitudes, uh, laid down the, the, the sand and the rock, and God said, on, um, the one that builds his house on the rock, uh, the storm will come and nothing will shake him. You know, just earlier, he, he's doing all these teachings. He's talking about the Beatitudes, the attitudes of being. Except we can't fulfill what God has commissioned us to walk to, it's separate from the Spirit. Can we, you guys already have it open, I hope, but Galatians 5. Um, if you want to turn there, verse 16, I'm going to pick up in. So if you're just wondering, you're like, man, I just, like, and I felt like this is for a lot of us here this morning, like, I want, to, I want to do this. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want to be more aware of the Lord. It's to crucify the flesh. That old person that you once were, it's no longer who you are. That person died. When someone says, oh, Josiah, remember that time when we were at like, high school, we did this and that? No, like, I don't remember that. It's not who I am. And I mean it. A lot of that I, I have zero memories of. Not because I've hid it away, but it's no longer who I am. All right, you're there, Galatians 5, verse 16. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit, and the desires of the Spirit against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. This helps us. You're wondering what's right and what's wrong. The Holy Spirit will bring, and bring conviction. We can get there, sin, conviction, and judgment. Um, condemnation, but it says it here, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalry, rival, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and I love Paul, <laughs> it's like, and things like these. <laughs> so he's like, everything else like this, it's, it's there too. Don't, don't try to find your way out. Really, uh, how I read this is Paul's like, I didn't list it, just so you know, if you kind of thought mine, your thing was in that, it's that too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, so I warn you, as I warned you before, that these, uh, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the spirits. Now this is evidence. This, this friends, is evidence that the Holy Spirit's at work in your life. You want to know, you, you, sh- you ought to know, but... It ha- is my life being outworked by living in the Spirit? It is this. Love, joy, peace, patience. Lord, give me more of that every single day. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there's no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have what? Crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. That means... The things that you desired to do no longer are desirable. What? Like, that's wild. I'm telling you, like, if if you're the kind of guy that loved to get on the, uh, uh, I won't use the word, I feel like it might be offensive here. Aussies, it's normal. But like to get on the drink, right? Um, 
every weekend. Like, if that's just your thing and you enjoy doing it, it's like, it's what the Holy Spirit does is not just empower you to knock on the weekend with the boys or the girls, but is empowers you to no longer desire those things. Hold on, what do you mean? That means if you're the kind of guy that would love to, I don't know, you guys have lakes here, not beaches, but beautiful beaches and lakes, and it's like there's a pretty girl walking by and your eyes go wondering. It's like, oh, but I, I didn't do anything. First of all, Jesus he said, I'm going to take it higher. If you look lustfully, you've already committed adultery. You're already done. He's like, it's, it's, that's that. But it's in, innate in you, the, the Holy Spirit removes, rips out your desire to want to even look. It goes for you ladies too. I've, I've heard some stuff out of some mouths. <laughs> All right, John 14 if you guys want to turn there too, we're going to pick it up in verse 5. So union and oneness, we're talking about walking in the Spirit, fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, being one with Him, Him in us, I in Him, is to be grafted in. It means that we do nothing separate from His will. Now, I'm not talking about going, drinking your coffee and like getting a job, get a job. Um, <laughs> but I, I mean... <laughs> I mean in the context of, of your life and the decisions you make and the things that you do, we don't do things separate from His will. The Holy Spirit makes us holy. He does. Don't lessen the God. To say the Holy Spirit doesn't do that, can I be so bold to say this, is to lessen the gospel. It is, it is to detract. It is to take away from what Jesus did on the cross. Jesus said, who the Son sets free is free indeed. You guys there? John 14. Let's not go on a tangent. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are. We, blah, 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 blah. Lord, we do not, not, <laughs> Lord, we do not know where you are going. How do we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth. Isn't that cool how he said, I'm going to give you the spirit of truth? He, what did he just say? I am the truth. He's saying, I'm giving you the spirit of me. So when you wake up in the morning and before you even, your stomach's grumbling, but before you even want to get up and feed, you, you just start praying and you start thanking him for your day. You start thanking him for your wife, your kids, your workplace and your boss that hates you and your colleagues that constantly gossip about you. And you're more aware of him in a situation and the light that you are in that place. It's a spirit of Christ that's in you manifesting. <laughs> All right, moving on. So I'm the truth, the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. So the destination isn't heaven. If we, if, if, if we again, we, we're diluting the gospel. If, if we make this life, the Christian life, a escape, uh, like a, an escape way to heaven, like it's just cool, I'm going to believe in Jesus and a couple other religions quietly so that maybe I'll, I'll get to heaven. You've missed it completely. Jesus said, I'm the way to the Father. And because of Jesus, the access point, and the power of the Holy Spirit that gives us access and gives us the ability to hear from the Lord for ourselves, we get to have fellowship with the Father here and now. That's when Jesus said, pray like this. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done. On earth now as it is in heaven. That wasn't a prophetic prayer. It was a now prayer. Verse 7, if you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you for so long and yet you have not come uh, to know me, Philip? The one who has seen me has seen the father. How can you say, show us the father? Do you not believe that I'm in the father and the father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own. That's the Christian life. That words that come out of our mouth is simply a manifestation of the Spirit. But the Father, as He remains in me, does His works. Believe me that, verse 11, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Otherwise, believe because of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, the one who believes in me, the works that I do, get this, he will do also, I've yet to see this, and greater works than these, he will do. Now, 
I love that Jesus draws us into that. I've yet to see anyone that does anything like of a 0.0001% of what Jesus did. But he's saying, you'll do that and greater. He's, his words, not mine. Take it up with him. Because I'm going to the Father, and whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, so the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me, uh, if you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Why? Because he has all power and authority. He's filled all things, according to Colossians 1. He's been uh, lifted up above all principalities, rulers, dominions, all the angels that have been released into this world, and they have geographical whatever dominions. You'll have all sorts of weird teachings out there. People say, you know, this spirit leads this place, and this God does this. I'm sorry. Jesus was lifted above all things. He conquered all things, and he fills all things, and everything else is lesser than he. And guess what? We've been grafted in to that same inheritance. We're co-heirs with Christ. The same spirit of God that raised Christ from the dead lives in you. So when you see that person walking down the street and you're like, that person has a limp in their leg, maybe I should pray for them. Maybe you should. And guess what? God will confirm with signs and wonders. Share the gospel. He'll confirm. If you ask, uh, verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. Verse 16, I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper so that he may be with you forever. The helper is the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it it does not see me or know him, but you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I am coming to you. After a little while, the the world no longer is going to see me, but you are going to see me because I live. You will also live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father and guess what? You and I are in him. And I in you. The one who, ha- who has my commandments and keeps them is the one who loves me. Want a barometer if you love the Lord? How does, <laughs> how does your life look? Like obeying what he says. I'm just reading the Bible. I'm not, yeah. Um, and the one who loves me will be loved by my Father and I will love him and he will reveal myself to, uh, to him. So death brings about union which brings obedience, and obedience leads to fruitfulness. John 16, 7 to 15. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I'm leaving, for if I do not leave, the helper will not come to you. This is just a couple of chapters later. It's not far after. But if I go, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world regarding, this is the role of the Holy Spirit, sin, righteousness, and judgment. Regarding sin, because they do not believe in me. Regarding judge, uh, righteousness, because I'm going to the Father, and you are no longer going to see me. And regarding judgment, because the ruler of this world has been judged. I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them at this present time. But when He, the Spirit of truth, His Spirit, Jesus' the Spirit, He will guide you into all truth, as He will not speak on His own. So Holy Spirit will glorify me. That's verse 14. I mentioned it earlier. That's a qualification of the Spirit at work, is that is Jesus glorified? Sin, because they do not believe in me. The Holy Spirit brings conviction to our sin. It means that we start to hate our sin. Uh, you quoted, a lot, Tyron quoted last night. Uh, I'm not going to try quoting it, but we must hate our sin and love the Lord with all our lives. We're going to see that's what will shake a nation. That's what will shake nations. Righteousness, because I go to the Father. The Holy Spirit guides us in the only uh, and is the only one who reveals to us our right standing with God the Father. You want to know if you're right with God? The Spirit of God will, will, will release that. You have been made right with God. All guilt, shame, condemnation, separate from where you're living now, is not from the Father. Now, if you're living in sin, you need to repent. Your guilt's just a manifestation of what you've just done. That's a good thing. It's a, it's a, it's a, a barometer of your heart, of where you're at. If you're, if you're guilty about something, that means your heart's in the right place because it, you don't want to do what you're doing. Repent of that, turn away, and follow Christ. Judgment, the Holy Spirit reveals that the ruler of this world has been judged. You, judged. You're being, you are now co-heirs with Christ. The rulers of this world, this atmosphere, this place, they have no rule over you. It's this very revelation, guys, that will bring us, me, you, the bride of Christ, into deeper union with the Holy Spirit, in divine union with the totality of God. Fellowship with the Holy Spirit changes everything. 
And, and again, if, if you had to come to like, well, what am I to do? Behold the Lamb. See Jesus. I, I mean it. I mean like every second of the day. I work a full-time job, all hours, pretty much seven days a week. Uh, and, and then like this church and other things. But in and amongst me, like maybe if I just, just about to like fire someone, because <laughs> I have to do that. I'm, I'm still, uh, I do that in love. And then, I'm, and then I move on and I, I continue to be aware of his presence in every day. And I'm really, when I'm talking to someone, even in those situations, if I can just say, I'm, I'm still aware of, even if they're unsaved, who Christ is in them and who he can be in them. And, and, and that's the role of, even for those that are shepherds in this room, pastors and leaders, that the, the role of, uh, 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 of who we are is to bring out who Christ is in someone. It's not just rebuke and say this, do this, and don't do this. It's actually to say, mate, like, I see this in you. You're called to be this. And when someone, I mean, there's been plenty of times I have one-on-ones with people, and they're just like, oh, I've done this, and da-da-da-da, or I shouldn't have done that. It's like, this is who God says about you. That's the breath of God. That's blowing wind. That's the wind of the Spirit, picking someone up and throwing them, like, you know, into a completely different direction. Finally, and I'm landing now, is power. Union, direction, which is the capacity on how we live and the fruit thereof within the Holy Spirit is power, love, and discipline. In 2 Timothy 1, Paul says that the Spirit of God is one of power, love, and discipline. Power is the display of the miraculous power of God. All, if you believe in Jesus, you've confessed of your sins, and you've been prayed upon for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and if you haven't, we can, we're going to have time, maybe later today we can do that, all have been anointed. When we talk about the anointing, can I just say it's the verb to the anointed. You're all anointed, and you wonder, why am I doing this? When was the last time you prayed for someone that was dead? <laughs> Start praying for people, and you'll see the anointing flowing, because it's not, it, it's not someone that's special. We've seen all sorts of miracles. I, I, I say this, like we, precious, I was healed of Crohn's disease. I had a chronic illness. It was meant to be for the rest of my life, completely healed, done. Not long ago, we saw someone that had a, a, an STD for over eight years. We had a word of knowledge, saw them, were like, uh, they, they uh, had a word of knowledge for a blood disease, and they just came up said, uh, quietly and said, I have an STD, I had it for eight years. I was you know, promiscuous in my early years, and we prayed for them. She came back and said, I'm completely healed, no markers. Doctors like, I don't know what's happening. We've had beautiful encounters with uh, words of knowledge for even, God heals all these things, self-harm. People that, and maybe there's people in this room, and may, we don't even need to pray for you, God would do it. But uh, people have had, um, who, who'd cut themselves on their thighs and arms, and, uh, and I'm telling you, I'm, my eyes, uh, they, would sh- they would tell me that uh, those cuts, gone, disappeared. Why? Because Jesus doesn't remember those things. Your sins are gone into the sea of forgetfulness. It's not who you are. It's Christ who lives in you. Jesus heals all things. He restores all things. There's nothing too big for Jesus. Can we stand? Can we pray? And the power of the Holy Spirit will produce fruitfulness. We we shared that. I just want to make an emphasis on that. Christianity is not to be weird, but it is a life of fruitfulness. Evidence of the Holy Spirit at work in your life is fruitfulness. And evidence of the Holy Spirit working through your life is the power. Just if you can, close your eyes. Father, we thank you for what sh- your word that was spoken, your written word, the Rima word, the Logos word, the, the, the breath of the spirit that, was, that, that, that you're speaking, that you're saying throughout, this, throughout last night, this morning, and for, and for the days to come. You know the words that are being spoken. You know the, the hearts, that, these words are the piercing like a sword, like a double-edged sword. And in this moment, we, we consciously crucify our flesh. We surrender ourselves, less of us and more of you and only you. Would you, Jesus, have all the glory, all the honor. And precious Father, to you have all the glory. We just want to surrender to your perfect will. Let us not. We ask, we, 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 we come to you as children and we, 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 we humbly, we plead with you. We say, Lord, ne- don't, don't let us. Don't let us walk away. Don't let us step aside. But help us, help us, Holy Spirit. Empower us to live in this truth. Empower us to never leave, uh, to, to leave this place the same. 
And would your Holy Spirit fall upon us in a fresh way, in fresh fire, the fresh wind of the Spirit, oil of the Lord. Even now, some of you are just being filled or even first time being baptized. Just welcome the Spirit of God. Acts 2, they don't, you didn't need someone's hand laid on you. It helps. It can help. But just in this moment, be, be more aware of Him. Be more aware of who He is, what He's done, and where He is seated. Holy Spirit, come. Blow on through like a fresh wind your fire ignite fresh flames wildfires across this nation that would birth a revival a, a, a people of repentance a people of many souls saved mass healings do it again Lord thank you Father we bless you Jesus